Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your valuable time to attend our presentation. It's my pleasure to present a robust 3 nanometer to 350 nanometer design flow using Sivago tools during the 2022 search. In this talk, I will introduce Sikan creations with a few overviews. Then, we will describe the changes we face in the IP industry. Lastly, I will conclude our collaboration with Sivaco from our front-end design to the back-end design. Instead of providing a GDS product, we will also describe how the robot Seacon was developed using the Sivaco tool deficiently. We have been providing clocking IPs to our fabric IC customers since 2006 and have been growing consistently since 2010. As you can see from the graphic of customers by region, we have design centers in Atlanta, USA, and Qualcomm, Poland. Our design engineers understand the main mission is to help our customers get to market quickly, and they have recognized our quality and support with multiple best of awards. Therefore, we have over 330 customers in the world, including over 130 customers in China. Our customers ship using our IPs are volume production from 180 nm down to 5 nm thin fat. Our 3 nm peels are Seacon proven already. Seacon Creations supports 12 foundries so far, including many geometries and flavors. We use Sivaco tools in our current work from 3 nm to 180 nm, including multiple foundries as shown logo here. And the process variants such as planar CMOS, FDSOI, and ThinkFed. The core of our pure product is the general purpose functional synthesizer, which is so widely programmable. We have used it in hundreds of chips and a wide variety of market. This has resulted in some truly gigantic volume, for example, in TSMC 28nm, 12nm, and 16nm thin fat, over 200 production chips using this IP, which has resulted in over 2 million wafers delivered to customers with our PO IP. This kind of volume are a testament to our robust high yield design and customer support to provide more functionality. Functional complementary RTL like Spray Spreadshot Clock Generator, SSCG, Jitter Cleaner, and Anywhere Alignment are available. Last, we will leverage the high value design to make PL variants that are optimized for low area, low jitter, low power, and high speed up to 10 GHz. Our latest new digital LC PL can even achieve 50 times better figure of memory FOM. Again, our PL IPs are available from 180nm down to 3nm thin fat. Our 3nm second is being tested now and its performance matches simulation. Service is one of our key product line, and we focus primarily on the PMA. The high speed error path, including the serializer, line driver, line receiver, equation, CDR, and digitalization. Our service has enabled extremely good performance in the micro semi FPGA and very low power due to the robust architecture, which provides a very low risk. Over the past few years, we reported and proven this multipolar PMA to several mainline process nodes from 180nm down to 6nm with a data rate ranging from 100 megabit per second up to 33 gigabit per second. We have over 75 different service IP in production or are currently in development with a wide and diverse customer base. Besides our multi-protocol PMA, we have protocol-specific PMS 
beautiful D by one displayable JST two zero four FPD link and several customer interface and ultra low latency PMAs. Beside our peers and service IP, we may have other handy analog IP that function complementary or use co components. For example, LVDs IO buffers may have plain RX, TX, and mostly bi directional variants, including CMOS IO buffers. The free running oscillator is for PL reference clock. We have a quick clock generator down to the nanosecond and a delay to digital converter DDC for dynamic frequency scaling DFS application. Then we also have a clock distribution IPs, such as CMOS buffers and max, to mitigate the excessive accumulated jitter in your SOC system. For your chips, a few biasing blocks like the band gap and power on reset PR are also available. This example show you can find our IP in TSMC database online. Just from the top 10% of our products, there are over 10 million wafers and 575 chips shown in the records. Let's go through the challenges we face in the IP industry and our cooperation with Sivago. For most front end designs, IP vendors will face unique front end design challenges. For example, we face tap out in different processes each week. Therefore, we may need a foundry and process independent front end design method. Using Sivago tools like Gateway help us solve problems with multiple processes and technology nodes, and I will present it. Starting the schematic design, we have a foundry and geometry independent schematic flow using Sivakos gateway, which allow all the schematic to be shared across all projects in different process nodes. For example, our fish node PL shares schematic from the top down to get level from 180 nanometer down to 3 nanometer. Only transistor level schematic are unique and carry device size and model type information. This foundry and geometry independent schematic flow, allowing porting from process to process quickly with very extremely low risk. Let's look at the front end design example of two extreme cases. 20 nm plan CMOS and 3 nm FinFET. In FinFET, angle design is still the same and at a high level, not that much has changed. Again, the angle block still lives at 5 nm or even down to 3 nm. However, statistical variability is increasing as device shrinking. So, more monocolor runs are a must. In addition, Schematic simulation of high speed block would deviate from post layout reality, especially PS3 resistance, made it much more post layout verification and work. Therefore, backend design challenges faced by IP vendors are more difficult than the front end challenge. For example, our 3 nanometer and 180 nanometer schematics are very similar in the front end but the backend is very different. Our backend design flow is based on Sivago Expert that addresses these challenges, which we will present it. Before that, I will present an overview of the process capacity and scale. A simple measure of process capacity is the number of GS2 layers in the PLIP, even though the PLs compare use only up to their metal four. The number of GDS2 layers of 5 nanometer has increased nine times since 180 nanometer, showing an increase in capacity. But does the nine times increase reflect process capacity? We agree. In the past decade, process technology has gotten increasingly complex. 
But how? Another simple and not very accurate measure of the process capacity is the design rule manual, DRM thickness, from 180 nanometer to 3 nanometer thin fat. The DRM thickness has increased over four times, and the 3 nanometer will keep growing before maturity. Does the big increase in DRM thickness show the process capacity? The last measure of the process capacity is straightforward by the runtime of the design rule track DRC. From 180 nanometer to 65 nanometer, the DRC runtime and process capacity were increasing modestly for IP blocks. The 40 nanometer and 28 nanometer north saw a large increase in the number of checks and the capacity of the checks and hence the DRC runtime. But the thin fat design is a whole order of magnitude more complex because several factors. First, tighter, more complex rules. Second, more field geometries. Lastly, more layers, for example, GDS2 layers, derived layers, mount layers, etc. Therefore, we can recognize the 5 nanometer thin fat runtime are over 10 times the 28 nanometer runtime and nearly 100 times the 65 nanometer runtime, which are quite complex and quite expensive in IP development. There is some debate over whether the process scales and the circuits well or not. The plot shows the area for second questions peers with similar frequency and jitter spec from 180 nanometer to 3 nanometer. We can see the PL size decreased to nearly 10 times and benefit to low cost for sure. If we hold the noise constant, ballpark KT on C, the area should scale with the capacitance area, and it does. For example, the gate capacitance was scaling through 65 nanometer, but the metal metal capacitance is dominant below 40 nanometer and still scaling well. So, the scale of the algo function, but real well as the digital function. A simple comparison demonstrates that the digital scaling from 180 nanometer to 3 nanometer is 300 to 1, but the algo scaling from 100 to 3 nanometer is only 10 to 1. Let's switch to our layout design flow with 3 nanometer to 180 nanometer as an example here. Our internal develop and process independent layout flow allow building blocks to be sure between foundries. In addition, here the 3 nanometer and 180 nanometer layouts of the same section of IP show the shared platform. The process independent flow is owing to the P cells and scripts being developed internally in Sivaco Expert to avoid foundry provided foundry specific PDK with foundry IP. Then the P cell can be used with adjustment for scaling to pass the design rule menu DRM from 180 nanometer down to 3 nanometer. Specifically, we use the stream mapping file in Expert to create foundry specific GTS, for example, TSMC versus UMC versus SMIC. The general IP cell strategy is highlighted here. First, the layout of the device involves many DRC rules. Therefore, different size devices involve different rules, and that takes a lot of time to draw and verify. Second, the P cells significantly shorten the user's time. Lastly, thin fat device require many parameters, W, L, N, number of things, and so forth. Therefore, the scripting in Sivaco Expert could be useful to save lots of time. There are two scripting languages possibility. The first one is called Lisa, and it's useful in the design of a simple structure like vias and planar fat. Therefore, the second one called JavaScript would be needed in the design of 
complicated structures. The object-oriented design enables the creation of complicated fats, resistors, multi-thin structures, and so forth. In this example, we will create PMOS 1.8V device, which has the following parameters. To press the P cell in step 1, we should select P cell tab to be the transistor. Step 2 would be set those required parameters and the type of the MOS. Step 3 is to add context to the gate and get vias by setting the right booting values. The last step is to add source drain vias, dummy, poly, PP, OD18, and unwell layers by setting the right value. After the preliminary GTS is ready, we need to do the IP simulation and verification. Since second creations provide PLS and service IP, this missignal IP takes longer simulation time. In addition, we are simulating process from 3 nm to 180 nm. So we need a flexible design flow. Lastly, in advanced nodes like FinFE, the RC simulation is necessary to capture the real second performance. So we will discuss the PL and service simulation. Then the difficulty faced with the RC simulation will be discussed. In service simulation, the most obvious and critical difficulty is its diverse time scales, which present a challenge for simulation in 10 orders of magnitude. For example, first, jitter requirements are on the order of hundreds of femtoseconds. Second, bit rates are on the order of 100 picoseconds. Third, word rates are on the order of 10 nanoseconds. Fourth, AC coupling time constant on the order of a microsecond. Fifth, PL lock time on the order of 50 microseconds. Lastly, link behavior on the order of a millisecond. In a PL spice simulation, we could have another rough observation to get a sense of its simulation difficulties. In 1996, a PL designer may preset the low filter voltage and still need three weeks for a significant lock simulation. In 2001, we still need one week for a significant lock simulation. In 2006, three days for a significant lock simulation. In 2011, a few days for a traded lock simulation. In 2016, we can kill off a bunch of traded lock simulation and check the result the next morning. In 2022, we kill off a bunch of RC traded lock simulation in 6 nanometer and below, but we still need a few days for the extracted lock simulation because the increased process capacity faster than the simulation speed. Let's go through the service system overview. The PMD PMA portions of the service are part of a bigger C Link system. The SPICE is still the key verification tool for the PMA PMD which is shown in the dash box, and we will focus on this talk. But to model functions above PMD, PMA, levels like the PCS and controller, the SPICE is no longer a good tool. Instead, a good value model is a must. Therefore, for system verification, a very model of the service is a must and useful in quickly testing the full PMA functionality, all operating modes, and combinations. Fortunately, Sivaco Silos is a good tool for digital simulation coverage. Secon Creations has proprietary modeling flow for generating very models of mixed signal circuits from the obvious analyst, so we can guarantee get level accuracy versus schematic. The variable model could capture needed angle functions using difference equation and is compatible with digital verification. Let us go through and dive into our variable modeling flow. A spice analysis can be generated from the schematic database through Sivaco Gateway and 
the lattice matches the layout from the LVS check. Then our spice to vehicle lattice parser can generate an accurate vehicle model. So the abstract vehicle model are made of the lowest level left cells and would be verified against spice. Moreover, we can include noise by using the vehicle data sign random function and the RTL can be used for major digital blocks. The value model result cross match spice and the fast speed allows all critical operation modes to be verified. This angle modeling in value example show a second order PL loop filter model in Verog. First, we convert the angle nodes into n bit buses. Second, the discrete time difference equations are used instead of differential equations in SPICE. Lastly, we not only can make the value result arbitrarily close to the SPICE one, but we also enhance the speed. We can show another vehicle model of a 30 system modeling in the mid signal circuit. The complete series channel locking from star with spread spectrum TX clock and 0.4 UI sinusoidal jitter added to TX data to further test the RX jitter tolerance JTAL verification through the loopback configuration. Therefore, the whole system went up in sequence starts the power on, then the PO will lock and we send the TX data with the embedded spread spectrum and sinusoidal jitter to the RX. Since the RX would need a settling time to lock to the TX input data, you may see a few RX bits the arrow counters will show errors initially, and then the RX clock data recovery CDR will lock and error free showing in the RX bits error counter. The whole series TX loopback to the RX only runs in seconds on one core simulation machine, which is very impressive owing to the simple modeling. In spy simulation, second question also uses a proprietary internal simulation flow, and we will show a few steps of how the flow was running. First, the simulation flow starts with significant test bench and data share across process and geometry. Our in-house scripts allow permutation and variation of spice decks and link with the open grid engine for parallel simulation. There are over 3,000 core simulation farms used, allowing rapid simulation over process, voltage, temperature, and mismatch. We use smart spice from Sivaco, Aves from Mentor BDA, PrimeSim, and Spectre RF as spice simulator with foundry spice model files. If we recall a few slides earlier about the 30 time scales difficulty, all the waveforms here are showing the various time scales result that can show our flow with Sivaco tool that could mitigate the difficulty in spice. We show a few examples here. First, a 16 GHz lock simulation showing 24 microseconds of simulation time at 32 gigabit per second with one bit duration equals 31.25 picosecond, which is a huge time scale difference. Second, a 32 gigabit per second TXI diagram with thousands of bits with a time step accuracy of much less than one picosecond. Third, a DFE, CTOE plus channel simulation, including an S parameter model for a 36 inch channel. Fourth, a frequent domain simulation of the whole TX for its return loss vacation up to 32 gigahertz. Let's switch the gear to the backend related difficulty, interconnect challenges. The law of iteration and post iteration simulation is becoming more important because the interconnect resistance is climbing quickly. For example, from 40 nanometer to 3 nanometer, the relative wire resistance 
almost per square has risen almost nine times. Therefore, the impact of resistance is leading to multiple challenges. First, the designs are becoming limited more and more by wire performers. Second, the designs are increasingly difficult to verify because of a need for simulation of disputed RC plastic. Since in advanced process, we must take the interconnect resistance into account. The effect of interconnect on simulation time is tremendous. For example, the simulation time from a schematic simulation of a cap attractive sim is two to three times, but the simulation time from cap only to RC is another order of magnitude. There are a few implications of a long RC simulation time. First, longer development cycles. Second, need for more simulation license. Third, need for parallel simulation license. Fourth, higher development cost. Again, the simulation of interconnecting plus device is expensive. So we must do something. Any idea? Correct. We need to simplify the complicated RC analysis by any RC analysis reduction method, such that the simulation time and cost can be reduced through the RC reduction. But we must watch out for accuracy. Fortunately, RC reduction can often be done with little impact on precision. The goal is to speed up the simulation with a lower cost while maintaining reasonable accuracy. So we can use the corner spread as a reference for accuracy. For example, if the corner spread is 40%, a 4RC versus RC reduction accuracy does not need to be much less than 1%. To effectively reduce the RC analysis, Sivakos Jivaro provides great simulation time reduction while maintaining reasonable accuracy. In the 6 nanometer thin phase example, the various reduced versions of the RC analysis are compared for the simulation with very close accuracy. We apply a whole TX as a test circuit in the RC analysis simulation. To benchmark, we also apply another vendor's RC reduction analysis as the gold standard. Our benchmarking results show that with Givaro's RC reduction analysis, we can speed the simulation up five times faster with a deterministic jitter error of less than 300 femtoseconds, or less than 1%, which was limited by the simulator's time step of a 33 gigabit per second I diagram. For circuits that are sensitive to mismatch, Sivago provides a high sigma analysis tool. In the example below, we analyze the PO static phase offset SPO. The SPO is a key PO parameter since it's a component of a reference spur. We can show the SPO to be 20 picosecond at 1 sigma, and then we can also analyze the results at 2 sigma, 3 sigma, or even over 4 sigma with statistic confidence. We can analyze the relative impact of different devices to help improve performance efficiently. To iterate the phase noise or jitter quickly in a PL, Sikhan creation uses a proprietary magnetic best frequency domain phase noise model to calculate the phase noise and jitter. The noise model includes all major noise sources, including VCO phase noise, reference noise, charge pump noise, divider noise, etc. in a PL. The plot shows the simulated and major result difference are within 10%. We have tested the model of process and even different VCO topology, like LC and RIM PLs with excellent agreement. Besides standard electromigration EM tool, we also have internal EM flow that works with smart spice major statements. The EM information is read from foundry extraction decks, and the results are processed and can be viewed in expert easily.
This is another useful tool to allow us to improve the EM performance in a layout quickly. Lastly, and most importantly, quality assurance QA is a must for delivering IP. Second question has a QA flow that works with Cbarcos EDA views and our generated views to ensure IP quality. Let's summarize and conclude today's talk. We went through an overview of Secon creation, and we have provided the role of an IP vendor. We've addressed the front-end challenges and solutions, including our use of gateway in mitigating porting challenges. Then we also talk about the backend challenges and solutions, including our use of expert. Lastly, we spend lots of time discussing the mid-signal design simulation challenges and solutions, including our use of Smart Spice, Givaro, Cyrus, and Variation Manager. Hopefully, this talk may provide you with a few ideas of how we apply a robust 3 nanometer to 350 nanometer design flow using Sivago tools. Thanks for your attention. For more information, press contact sales at seekancia.com.